I'm off to Falkenberg today for going to induct James Alexander MBE into the Scottish Traditional Music Hall of Fame. Martin and I, we're going to take some photos and just have a lovely time. We're going to meet some young people and we're going to listen to some great music. We've just arrived in Falkenberg at the Falkenberg Institute. What a beautiful journey up north. And now we're going to induct James Alexander MBE into the Scottish Traditional Music Hall of Fame. So it's a pleasure to be here tonight representing Hands Up For Trad and inducting James into the Scottish Traditional Music Hall of Fame. Congratulations. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be in Falkenburs. Yeah. Are you from Falkenburs? Not originally, no. I was born and brought up not far from here, uh, a village called Drybridge near Bucky. Uh, and went to Bucky School at the same time as the famous Dougie Lawrence fiddle So we went through school together. Now we're here tonight to induct you into the Scottish Traditional Music Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. You've done so much over your career. And it's just been amazing tonight, not just the presentation, but all of these musicians that have turned out mm -hmm. to see you. Mm -hmm. That's quite a shock. There's one came into the dressing room earlier on, and I wonder why is he here? And, uh, but then when about, I don't know how many turned up, there's about 50 maybe who turned up, it was quite a shock, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Mary said it was 60. Really? From, oh, well. Uh, someone came from Stuttgart. Right. Uh, a few from south of the border as well. It's, it's, and I'm amazed. I wouldn't do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would. So, um, when you were when you were young, you were in a musical family. Was was there yeah. music played in the house? It was just the end of the Bothy time, and, and I was brought up in a, a wee farm, wee croft. And on a Friday night, the the farm workers from the other farms would come up and have a, a wee kitchen session, and that's how I first got to hear traditional music, just grassroots, raw singers, guys playing the comb, playing the Jews harp. There's one guy played accordion and I was really fascinated by this guy because he was making a great sound and uh, we had an old piano which was put in a wee alcove which was even a button bend at one time and I just sat, sat there quietly tinkering away thinking nobody was listening but obviously they were so that was me, I don't know how old I was, maybe four. And uh, when did you choose the fiddle? Uh, well, my mum was really into it to sort of uh, like classical music. She took me to see the, the, the Bucky Operatic Society's production. She went once a year. Uh, she hardly left the croft, to be honest, but she would go away once a year to see the, the... So I was sitting in the front row, right beside the leader of the orchestra, about a metre away, uh, fascinated by the sound this guy made. And uh, what went on in the stage, it was Gilbert and Sullivan, I think, but I didn't see or hear any of it. I just listened to this guy's fiddle playing. And I kept on speaking about it, and my mother phoned the school and said, any chance that you could get tuition on, on the violin, it was known as. And uh, that led to fiddle being taught in, in the school, or violin, it was the of Scots fiddle music. So that's how I got started in that, yeah. Uh, so it was classical music you got taught in the school? Yeah, when I eventually was told to report for a lesson at the room at the Bucky School, and opened the door, it was the same man that I'd been watching leading the orchestra. He, he was a teacher, so he was very much a classical player. He, uh, yeah, he was quite focused on classical. He, he reckoned that traditional Scottish music would spoil their technique, which I'd seen so many great players with great technique, and you think it wouldn't happen. So. And so you played the violin throughout school, and did you go to London to study? No, I, I did get a scholarship to go to London, but uh, I chickened out of that. I actually went to Aberdeen and did agriculture, uh, and uh, my mother, mother was never happy with that. So I also did a, a, an external degree from the Trinity College London. Uh, so by the time I left Aberdeen, I was qualified in agriculture and in music teaching, so it was a strange combination. <laughs> and did you come home at that point? I came, well, I went to work in farms, uh, Peter Head area, Gamery, Melrose. Um, farming went through a slump in the 70s, and uh, I was just jobbing around casually. And uh, the same guy that taught me had a brittle bone condition, and he went off sick. And I was asked would I come in and just help the the older students doing exams just to take them through and uh, the rest is history. Uh, my, my former teacher never recovered from this brittle bone condition and I was asked to stay on and that was for 37 years. So before you got that job, what kind of music were you playing? 
Band boys, it was a country and western time, and to get work, I was playing with country bands, doing keyboard and uh, guitar and fiddle. Um, but traditional Scottish fiddle music was always my my first love, and uh, I was a great fan of people like Willie McPherson, who I knew quite well, uh, Hector McAndrew. Uh, I was friendly with Heavy Gray, um, and grew up with folk like Dougie Lawrence, Charlie McCarran. We were all friends together, so it, it became my style of music, yeah. So you got the, the job in the schools. Mm -hmm. Were you allowed to teach some traditional music? Not at all, not. The music advisor was, he was god to all things music in the area and uh, I kept getting a wee reprimand saying that, you know, this shouldn't be done and uh, eventually he said, well, we can allow so much of it but not too much. And uh, I just said, that's sort of maverick nature. I said, well, no, if, if you're going to be like that, I'll just do it all the time. And uh, he's gone, and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so you're obviously very involved in the scene. What came first, Falkenberg's Fiddlers or Spayfest? Well, Falkenberg's Fiddlers, I mean, neither of these things were, were planned. Uh, I could see that a lot of the kids were playing the fiddle and stopping after a wee while, like you mentioned on the stage. It, it became just, I do it for a while and leave. And when I introduced Scottish fiddle music and put some modern sounds to the, the background, everyone just got hooked and they just kept on playing. So that was in about 1980. Uh, the first group of fiddlers started. We were around the local homes and hospitals and WRIs and whatever. And uh, then eventually we plucked up courage to go on a wee tour to Shetland of all places. And that really was an eye opener because uh, you know, if you were a boy in Shetland and you didn't play the fiddle, folk wondered why. And, and my lot, all the boys that maybe thought it was not cool, it became the thing to do. And never looked back. So the year after that, we went off to America and toured for three weeks. Uh, two weeks touring and then a week playing for Disney World. Uh, each day for twice, a wee job we had. And uh, then we toured France, Belgium, back to America a few times, Canada, Germany. And it just became, it just grew and grew and grew. Then. Uh, we were playing at a, a function, a weekend farm, open weekend, to raise money for the local school, and um, it was like a festival atmosphere, and I'd said to some of the guys that were there, you know, I'd often thought of a festival different from the Keith Festival, different from other festivals, but like a, a more of a Celtic festival, and uh, I thought Falkenbergs would be good to host it. So out of that was born Spayfest in 19... Well, that, that, the idea was 1994, the first Spayfest was 1995. So this is year 22 we're on now, yeah. Do you remember who the first acts were booked? Totally, yeah. Uh, Ali and Phil, Boys of Loch. Um, and they were back a few times afterwards. Uh, guys from Gary West, uh, with at that time the Porridge Boys, Porridge Boys, Porridge Men. Uh, Colin Campbell played in the band, a pupil of mine. Uh, Catherine Campbell was up with a, a group, Kaluna. Uh, yeah, but uh, over the years we've had a lot of the bands back, we've had the battlefield a few times, uh, Boys of Loch at least three times, Ali and Phil every third or fourth year, so they become regulars. And then a lot of the foreign bands, I, I got friendly with a guy called Mark Ring Ringwood who run a, uh, a touring agency, so that's how I got in touch with people like the Barra McNeils, Slanchava, Richard Wood, all these people. And then touring myself, I would see pe people abroad, like in Vancouver, I met some folk musicians and invited them over to the festival. Same in America, I met plenty of folk down from like Tennessee University. Through my work at the conservatoire, I was dealing with folk from Tennessee University anyway. So uh, we've got some coming over this year for Spayfest uh, from ETSU. That's amazing. So when did you start, when, when Falkenberg's Fiddlers, was there a point you said, this really works? A few points. One point that struck me as, as being relevant, I, I, was, I used to go for a pint with some of the friends in, in the way home for a gig. And they were saying, we do like hearing the fiddlers. They're, they're, like, they're not like a school group. They're actually good for, they're just good at what they do, irrespective of their age or what they're, you know. And uh, I thought, well, there's something here. And we started recording, and that's when, you know, that took off as well. So we, we I don't know, seven or eight CDs, I don't know, some videos as well. So, yeah, I mean, the, the audiences liked it. Um, particularly in America and Canada, I mean, they just loved it. I mean, we, we were playing in, like, football stadiums and um, Grandfather Mountain Highland Games to, you know, thousands of people. It was a real, surreal kind of experience. But because we were actually Scottish from Scotland, you know, but you know what the, the Americans are like with their Highland Games and they were like intrigued that these people came from Scotland. And uh, so I, th I think because there was that 
sort of um, example being shown, um, you know, the younger fiddlers who weren't in the group but still getting top by me, they, they were just dying to get in and work their way forward to get to the front, and that's how it worked, you know. That's amazing because I know a lot of the youth groups, there's waves, and you can have your highs or your top, and then suddenly mm -hmm. everybody disappears. But you, mm -hmm. you seem to have managed just to keep it going. The, the talent is always there. It's, it's how you unlock the talent and, and how you deal with folk. I've never treated people like teacher people. It's always been, you know, equals, and you know, we've had good fun along the way. It's, it's never been a teacher people relationship. It's always been just a friend type thing. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of musical heroes, who would be yours? Oh well. I've got a lot of respect for Ali Bain, you know, uh, a man that's been playing for so long and still plays very, very well, you know, and if I could play like that at his age, I'm not far behind him actually, but, you know, a lot of people lose his skill. The fiddle is a very intricate instrument, as you know, and many of my colleagues have kind of lost the touch in their 50s even, you know, you need the dexterity, the presence of mind. So Ali Bain, a great example, um, another friend of mine, Alistair Fraser, um, you know, Dougie Lawrence, fine traditional player. Uh, Charlie McKern, Duncan Chisholm, a good pal as well. Uh, I was lucky to be around at the time. There were all, there were all these amazing players, and they're still on the go. And they've, they've stood the test of time. These guys, you know. Uh, and I'm friendly with Phil Cunningham, another great ambassador for the music, you know. And uh, just raw, raw talent, you know. You don't need to go and have bits of paper saying I, I am a qualified musician. You're, you're a musician, or you're not a musician. You know? They're a good company because they're all in the Hall of Fame. All right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's great. Well, thanks very much, James. My pleasure. Thank you very much for the award. It is a bit of a shock tonight, I've got to say. Um, oh, it's brilliant. You've been in the whole band. Uh -huh. So we've got to be ready with all that. All right, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> the thing is, there are so many different versions of tunes that we've done over the years. The good old tunes always come back, but uh, I sometimes change the arrangement or change the key or whatever, and uh, I can see there's a bit of a uh, what era are you? you know? <laughs>